video, we're going to use the, uh, the new MyStudio VS36 and we're going to do uh, just some various product shots, do some different lighting configurations just so you can kind of get an idea of the kinds of things you can do, uh, moving the light forward and back, uh, using the bounce cards, smaller items, larger items, and also um, a recommended accessory with the VS36 is these uh, the AL2 uh, accent lights, the dual bulb accent lights. You can use the AL1s as well. I kind of prefer to have the option to use one or two lights, so always go with the AL2 when I have a chance on a bigger studio like this. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the light um, in the room because we like to have the My Studio light being the main light so other light doesn't bleed and, and affect the, uh, the color temperature. So I've got uh, my camera set up here. I'm using a 50 millimeter lens on full frame camera. Uh, let me see, the settings are ISO 200. We've got it at f5 and a 30th of a second. Uh, one of the things I'm doing here, uh, you can probably tell I've got the candy dish positioned towards the very front of the, the background. And so that allows the background to kind of fade in the distance and the light actually falls off and gets darker as it goes towards the back. So it's not going to be the pure white background, it's kind of a gradient, but that's kind of what I'm looking for at this point. Um, bounce cards I'm going to have positioned fairly close to the image. Um, and I'll do a couple images with, with them and without, so you can kind of get the idea of how they affect the image. So I'm going to go ahead and take a first image. And great. All right, now I'm going to remove one of the bounce cards. Take the one out of the right side. And actually, I'm going to take both of them out right now. And you'll see quite a difference. So because it's a reflective item, when you put something white up there like this, uh, it really makes a difference. It reflects into the side of your uh, item. And that's kind of you know, what I was looking for. So here I just put the left one back and we're going to put it right about there and snap. So you kind of see that. Now we're going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the accent lights. And I'm not going to have them too close. I'm just going to kind of have them towards the back, kind of feathering in. And then let me get this other one back here. Kind of position it about the same. I'm going to go ahead and take away the bounce cards right now. But I'm looking at the image right here. And I can already see there's a little too much light coming in from this side, so I'm just going to fade it out a little bit. That's a little, a little closer to what I'm looking for. And these types of things, you really just need to play around with it until you kind of get the look you're looking for. This will be a little more dramatic with some side lighting. All right, so you get that idea. One other thing you can do with the, the uh, accent lights is actually have them facing just the background. And you're kind of using them to light the background. It's kind of a nice thing to have some extra lights. So we're basically lighting the background separately from the image. It's one way to get the background a little bit whiter. So we're going to lose some of that gradient. And then I can decide whether I want the, uh, the bounce cards in or out. I think I'm going to put them in right now. And this, this will give us more of an image that's kind of floating on white, the gradient's kind of taken away because of that extra lighting. And there you go. So there's some different configurations really quick using the bounce cards, the accent lights. Um, and let's move on to a different product right now. Okay, so real quick I wanted to demonstrate how the light fall off works when you're taking a picture of an image and maybe your light is a little farther away from the background. We get a nice gradient. So what we've got here is an older Canon lens. Um, and I've placed the lens, obviously, right towards the front here. And I've brought the light back so that it's as far back from the background as you can get, pretty much, and still get some light down on your subject. Um, but you'll notice, and I'm going to take the picture real quick here, that the light starts to fall off as it goes behind the lens. So it kind of turns to a grayish. 
which can actually look nice. If you're looking for that pure white background, then this is not the setup that you want to do. You want to kind of, you know, you probably want the light closer to the background and your subject closer there also. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to just kind of show how this can work for you having this longer background area to play with. It's kind of like being in a big photography studio. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got my camera set up now. Uh, I went to f5 because I'm a little closer to the lens and I'm now at a 30th of a second but I've still got ISO uh, 200. So I've already got it framed up in here and I can already see that there's a nice gradient at play here. I'm going to go ahead and take the image. Another thing I could do, I, I kind of like to get when I'm doing product photography is get right down near the image and kind of get it kind of in your face and get a real kind of bird's eye perspective, or not bird's eye, but kind of a ground view of it. But you can play around and um, you know, you could, uh, you could raise, raise this a little bit. And then you can, um, let's see, I'm gonna do a quick adjustment here. I wasn't planning to do this. And then you can kind of look down on your subject. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's gonna still give you a nice image. All right. This is good. And obviously with this perspective, you're not going to get quite as much of that dramatic gradient fall off behind it because we're looking a little more directly down at an angle, but you get an idea. Um, just some of the things you can do, and I recommend that you try different perspectives and different angles when you're doing your products because when you finally get the image off the camera, onto your computer, a lot of times it looks different than on the back of your camera. So just wanted to show you that. Um, Obviously, you can play with the bounce cards. There's a number of different things you can do with that. Okay, so we've changed things around a little bit. We've got a larger item in here. We've got a little set of bongos right here. And I want on this photo, um, rather than having the, the product you know, close to the front and the background kind of fade away, I kind of want that white floating image uh, on a white background. Um, and so I've got the product closer to the background, still several inches away and I've got the light stand moved up about two feet. So we're just gonna take pictures of the bounce cards real quick and then a couple pictures with the accent lights and see what we can do. Uh, my exposure, I went to the slightly shallower depth of field. I went to F4, uh, still ISO 200 and I'm at a 30th of a second and we're just gonna kinda see how that comes out. All right, so. I like basically how the shot's um, composed. I kind of have it evenly filled up in the frame. Uh, basically, it's like I'm taking a portrait of, um, of the product. So let's go ahead and snap one quick picture. Got the camera down on the level of the image. All right, so I like that. Uh, I'm going to do one more image. I'm going to raise, raise the angle and just kind of shoot down at it a little bit. It just gives a slightly different feel. When I'm doing product photography, I like to usually get two or three different angles because you never know exactly what you're going to like or what the customer is going to like at the end of the day. Um, when you get it on your computer, sometimes it looks a little different. All right, check my focus. Change just a little bit. All right, exposure remains the same and picture number two. All right, so just a slightly different angle, just kind of whatever you're going for. All right, one little thing I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take off the bounce cards. And I've got the accent lights positioned just to the side. I'm just gonna use one light right here on each one of them, just a little kiss of light on the side. Now, whenever I'm adding a little light, I check to see that the exposure hasn't changed. It looks like it has, so I'm actually going to increase the shutter speed to about a 40th of a second, just about a third of a stop, and I'll take that picture. All right, so you can see how there's some kind of uh, highlights on the sides. It, it adds a little bit to it, I think, um, but you can decide whichever whichever style you like. And I'm going to go back down, do that same image closer to the, uh, the height. 
new level of the product. And you're still going to see the highlights on the side. Check my focus. And click. All right, so uh, again, that one was just demonstrating how if you really want that white background, you're going to want the light push up a little bit closer to the background and with the product a little bit closer. You still always want to be, I don't know, four, six, eight inches off the background just to kind of allow that sweep, allow the background to fade in and be compressed. Um, like I said, I'm using a 50 millimeter lens because I'm using slightly um, larger products. If I was using or photographing smaller products, I would probably use more of like a 75, 85, or even a 100 millimeter lens uh, to kind of compress the background more and make the product pop. That's just kind of a, a rule of thumb. The longer the lens, it's going to help compress the background. Uh, but obviously, if I was using a 100 millimeter lens in here, I'd probably be three or four feet back from the table, which is another option. Um, but I don't quite have the room for that in here. So, all right, we're going to go for one more item. It's going to be a little bit taller, uh, a little bit larger, and we're going to kind of use the height here. And all right, so for our final product, we wanted to pick something that was kind of big, uh, to kind of show what you can do. This, this object is about 24 to 26 inches tall. It's a musical instrument called a cajon, a uh, percussion instrument. And as you can see, it takes up a good amount of space in there. So I've got my camera pulled back a little bit, still using the 15 millimeter lens. And let's see. Um, I think this one I'm gonna I'm gonna take a picture with the out accent lights, but you can see how the product is so large that it's actually gonna cast a little bit of a shadow on the background. It's not a bad photo at all. I've actually upped my um, aperture also to f8. Uh, because it's got some depth, I don't necessarily want it falling out of focus really quickly. The higher the aperture, um, the further your depth of field is. So we got an F8 and I had to go down to about a thirteenth of a second to get the correct exposure. So what I'm going to do right now, we've taken that photo without any lights. I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, the accent lights over here. And because the product is really quite shiny, I know if I shine it directly into it, you're going to get probably quite a bit of a hot spot here, probably more than is desirable. So I'm going to do what's called feathering the light. It's still getting a little light off the side, um, but it's just going to be more of a, uh, a subtle lighting effect. I'm looking at my camera. That's still a little bit hot, so I'm still going to move it a little bit. All right, that's got about what I want. And I'm going to do the same thing to this back one. Now it's not as reflective on this side, so I can hit the light a little more directly. And let's see how it looks. And I'm reasonably happy with that. I'm going to take a photo. And so there you can see the difference in the photos with the accent light and without it. Um, I'm going to do I'm going to bring this one accent light down here a little bit. I think I'm going to turn, turn one off. Let me see how that looks. All right, that is going to totally move the reflection. One, because it's horizontal and it's much lower. Let me just... All right. So it's going to add some sort of an accent to the photo. You may like it, you may not, but it just changes things up a little bit. So that kind of gives you an idea, kind of when you change things up. Let's see if you did the same thing. Bring this around to the side a little bit. Let's see. Also wanted to mention that I have the camera, because it's a tall item, I've kind of got the camera up and shooting down at a little bit of an angle here. Um, that helps it fit within the frame. I, I checked it out a little bit lower. I didn't like the angle as much. I'm going to do one here. And then I'm going to turn off this light. Alright, so that just gives us some different options to use with that product.
you know, it really comes a matter of taste and your eye and what you're looking for. Um, so basically, that's a quick kind of run through of some things we can do with the VS36 from a small object to a larger one, accent lights with or without, bounce cards with or without, and some of the differences. But basically, you're going to get the most benefit out of it when you give it a try yourself and just start putting the things that you're going to be photographing in there, messing around with some of the different options. So I uh, hope this was helpful and get out there, shoot, practice, and um, if you've got any questions, you can always contact us. Thanks for watching.